In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. On the day of her baptism, Wendy Ann was welcomed into the church, given new life in Christ, and clothed with the garment of salvation. Today we greet the remains of our sister, surround her with the church's prayer. We commend Wendy to the mercy of God and pray that the promise made to her in baptism be fulfilled. We gather in this funeral mass to pray for the repose of the soul of Wendy Ann, to pray for the consolation of her family. So we come before the Lord Jesus, cognizant of our sins, but asking for the gift of his mercy. You raise the dead to life in the spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You bring pardon and peace to the sinner. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. 
You bring light to those in darkness. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, whose nature is always to forgive and to show mercy, we humbly implore you for your servant, Wendy, whom you've called to journey to you. And since she hoped and believed in you, grant that she may be led to our true homeland to delight in its everlasting joys. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. A reading from the book of Ecclesiastes. For everything there is a season, and a time for every matter under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up what is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to throw away stones and a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to seek and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to throw away, a time to tear and a time to sow, a time to keep silence and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time for war and a time for peace. What gain have the workers from their toil? I have seen the business that God has given to everyone to be busy with. He has made everything suitable for its time. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. my shepherd I shall not want he makes me lie down in green pastures he leads me beside still waters he restores my soul the Lord is my shepherd there is nothing I shall want he leads me in right paths for his name's sake even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. You prepare a table before me, in the presence of my enemies you anoint my head with oil my cup overflows the lord is my shepherd there is nothing i shall want surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, 
Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore, we have been buried with him by baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in the newness of life. But if we have died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. the world so much he gave his only son that all who believe in him might have eternal life alleluia 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 the lord be with you and with your spirit a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate people one from another as the shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep at his right hand and the goats at his left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you that are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me food, I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food? or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you, or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did it to me. Then he will say to those at his left hand, you that are accursed, depart from me into the eternal fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you gave me no food. I was thirsty and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger and you did not welcome me, naked and you did not give me clothing, sick and in prison and you did not visit me. And they will also answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not take care of you? Then he will answer them, truly I tell you, just as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment but the righteous into eternal life. The Gospel of the Lord. 
praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Praised be Jesus Christ. Now and forever. We gather in this funeral mass, firstly to pray for the repose of the soul of Wendy Ann Waters. Here in this church where she and her family have roots, where they came to pray, where she came to pray, to meet the Lord Jesus. And we pray precisely that now in the mystery of death, she meets the Lord who welcomes her home. We gather here with the symbols of her Catholic faith, the white garment, we might say, that we place over the urn as a reminder of baptism and of the grace of God that's received in baptism. The purple vestments we wear are a reminder, aren't they, of Lent, a time of sorrow and penance, but looking forward to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus and the risen Jesus himself symbolized by the Easter candle that is lit. And so though there is sorrow, understandably, in the face of death, we also have the hope that our Catholic faith gives to us, our hope in the risen Jesus. We pray as well for her family, which mourns her, for her son, Brett, for her sisters, Peggy, Lori, Tammy, Tina, Julie, and Vicki, for all of their family and friends gathered here. We think in particularly of Kim, who is not here. I understand she's in hospital. Perhaps she's following the funeral mass, but we include her also in our prayers today. That in the face of death, in the understandable grief that follows, that the death and resurrection of the Lord Jesus might bring them comfort. I'm relatively new, not even one year at this parish, so I never met Wendy, but at the reception afterwards. Her family will be sharing some stories of her and remembrances of her, and no doubt you've been doing the same. I might restrict myself then simply to an observation, a reflection arising from the gospel that the family chose for this funeral mass, that famous passage from Matthew 25. The day of judgment before the Son of Man and Jesus saying those, to those who he welcomes into his kingdom, when I was sick, when I was hungry, when I was thirsty, in so far as you did anything for the least of these, you did it to me, and the contrary. When we hear those familiar words, we think of them usually as a invitation or maybe even more a stern warning to us that we not ignore or overlook or neglect those who are suffering, the hungry, the sick, the imprisoned, etc. And surely that's true. And so we might take comfort as we look back on the life of a beloved one who is now dead, take comfort in those moments where we saw those words lived out. That is to say, when she was an instrument of the Lord's compassion to the suffering, the sick, the hungry, the thirsty, and so forth. But there is another dimension of that, perhaps one that we don't immediately think of, which is not from the perspective of those who are extending what we call the corporal works of mercy, 
but rather to those who receive them. That is to say that Jesus says something quite remarkable, quite profound in this passage from Matthew 25, namely that in those who are hungry, thirsty, naked, imprisoned, sick, lonely, he identifies himself with them. That is to say that the suffering and afflicted in the world are not distant from God. Sometimes the world makes that judgment that those who are suffering and afflicted are somehow distant from God. But that's not the judgment that Jesus gives us in Matthew 25. To the contrary, not only is he close to them, but rather he identifies himself with them. Insofar as you did this to the least of my brethren, you did it to me. Not only is he close to them, but he identifies himself with them. And so when we come to bid farewell in an earthly sense, but in a spiritual sense, in a Christian sense, to entrust our sister to the Lord, we do so knowing that even in those times when life was difficult, the Lord was not far from her, quite to the contrary. And so our prayer in this funeral mass can be inspired by that confidence that the Lord who was close to her in life will not be distant from her in death. That can be our prayer in this funeral mass for Wendy. Our prayer also for her family that mourns her that that might comfort them and that the prayers of this parish and the sympathies and condolences of this parish, which I express to the family, might also be a moment of comfort as we gather to pray for her soul and for the souls of all the faithful departed. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Eternal rest grant unto her, O Lord, and let, let perpetual light shine, shine upon her. Amen. Just a few announcements about the funeral mass. Uh, at the time of Holy Communion, for those Catholics present who are regularly receiving Holy Communion, you can come by the side aisles. If you just wait, the ushers will indicate at the time through the side aisles, then return to your seats by the center aisle. If you're not receiving Holy Communion, you may remain seated if you wish, or you may come forward and just by crossing your arms across your chest, uh, receive a blessing. At the conclusion of the funeral mass, uh, the urn will be taken to the cemetery, which is behind the church here, and you're invited to walk over there for the burial. And then after the burial in the parish hall, there's a reception uh, where you're invited to greet the family and also the family will be sharing their memories of Wendy. Please stand. God Almighty Father, you raised Christ your Son from the dead with confidence. We ask him now to save his people as we make our prayers for the church and for the world. The response is, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. For Wendy Ann, who in baptism was given the pledge of eternal life, that she may now be admitted to the company of the saints. For this, O Lord, we pray. 
Lord, hear our prayer. For our sister, who received the body of Christ, the bread of life, that she may be raised up on the last day. For this, O Lord, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all our deceased relatives and friends, and for all who have helped us, that they may have the reward of their goodness. For this, O Lord, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the family and friends of our sister Wendy, especially for her sister Kim, that they may be consoled in their grief and strengthened in their illness. For this, O Lord, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all gathered here in this funeral mass to worship in faith, that we may be gathered again, gathered together again in God's kingdom. For this, O Lord, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray. God, our shelter and our strength, you listen in love to the cry of your people. Hear the prayers we offered for our departed brothers and sisters, and for especially for Wendy. Cleanse them of their sins and grant them the fullness of redemption. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Please stand. As we humbly present to you these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, for the salvation of your servant Wendy, we beseech your mercy that she who did not doubt your son to be a loving savior may find in him a merciful judge who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. 
Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he is the salvation of the world, the life of the human race, the resurrection of the dead. Through him, the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. Please kneel. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Michael, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servant, Wendy Ann, whom you've called from this world to yourself. Grant that she who is united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, 
we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Please stand. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And, and with, with your, your spirit. spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Please kneel. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. But only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Maria gratia plena Ave Ave Dominus Dominus tecum Please stand. Let us pray. O God, creator and redeemer of all the faithful, grant to the souls of your departed servants released from all their sins, hear our prayers for those we love, and give them the pardon they have always desired through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Before we go our separate ways, let us take our leave of our sister. May our farewell express our affection for her. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day we shall joyfully greet her again when the love of Christ, which conquers all things, destroys even death itself. Trusting in God, we have prayed together for Wendy, and now we come to the last farewell. There is sadness in parting, but we take comfort in the hope that one day we shall see her again and enjoy her friendship. Although this congregation will disperse in sorrow, the mercy of God will gather us together again in the joy of his kingdom Therefore, let us console one another in the faith of Jesus Christ. Eat. 
To you, O Lord, we commend the soul of Wendy Ann, your servant. In the sight of this world, she is now dead. In your sight, may she live forever. Forgive whatever sins she committed through human weakness, and in your goodness grant her everlasting peace. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Dear friends, may every mark of affection and every gesture of friendship that you give to others be a sign of God's peace for you. In peace, let us take our sister to her place of rest. Since fall. 